going to leave the presentation up. You can use the keys here, or you can use the mouse, however you normally would advance your slides. You could advance the slides backwards and forwards. Okay. 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 okay, this session is, uh, again, uh, very different from some of the uh, sessions we've had in previous uh, AMS WMA uh, meetings called New Unconventional Concepts and Legal Ramifications. Ugly word, legal ramifications. But, uh, and actually, uh, we're going to have a paper later on in the week uh, dealing with the uh, legal issues and other modification from a person that hasn't attended these conferences before. So we look forward to that. Uh, a professor coming from the University of New Mexico. But first off, in, in this session, session two, Atmospheric heating is a research tool by Lyle M. Jenkins from Eastland Scientific Enterprises Corporation, Houston, Texas, and its co-author, B.J. Uh, Eastland. Uh, Mr. Jenkins. All right, I've got to uh, start off with a couple of stories. The one thing, uh, my co-author has uh, abandoned me because uh, he died in December, and I was able to cobble together enough uh, of his, his part of the, the paper to um, define uh, or at least get the paper out. And uh, I'm a little soft on some of the, the concepts on the plasma shield and, and that because my background is uh, in engineering, aerospace engineering. I worked for NASA for uh, 38 years and, and had retired recently, so the uh, Inter Jenkins Enterprises is kind of a, uh, a small uh, organization to uh, write off the expenses on this uh, trip. But you mentioned uh, one of the things. Uh, my daughter graduated from the University of Texas and uh, in the accounting area and came home and rebelled. She uh, said she wanted to become a lawyer, and so <laughs> for an engineer, that uh, that things put put things in perspective. Uh, but certainly, the the legal ramifications uh, are an aspect that we need to to understand before we start uh, using a lot of the these techniques. Now, the thing I want to bring in is. Uh, use microwave beam as a uh, tool to research and, uh, and understand the weather. So I'll try to go through this uh, and be able to uh, define the, the uh, particular aspects of uh, the early stages, but my ultimate uh, goal is to provide uh, a basis for space-based solar power as a clean, renewable energy source. And that concept I'll uh, uh, show us in, in one of the slides here. The climate change, I think, is a, a reality. And uh, space-based solar power, though, can provide a clean, renewable energy source. But uh, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty in um, the uh, development of space-based solar power, which uh, we took a particular aspect of that uh, and used space-based solar power to provide a capability to uh, heat the cold rain downdraft in a a thunderstorm to prevent tornadoes, and we'll go into that uh, concept. But uh, the potential benefits, we think, will support the uh, demonstration of the elements of space-based solar power. Certainly, uh, there's one aspect here that we want to uh, and I think these are guidelines that the National Academy of Sciences outlined that uh, certainly based on theoretical modeling and simulations, uh, 
define the potential for instability and chaos, uh, do some small-scale mitigation experiments, and then uh, define the uh, requirements for uh, the design, development, cost analysis of the deployment systems. But we want to study uh, related natural events, the potential side effects. So the particular research concept that uh, is the creation of a plasma pattern in uh, the high altitude. And uh, Ben Eastman had come up with an idea that he could leverage the effect of cosmic rays to reduce the energy requirements for the, the plasma pattern. So uh, if we can establish the plasma pattern, then uh, there are certainly some ways to uh, be able to evaluate uh, and use that to uh, define certain weather uh, phenomena and uh, provide a basis for the uh, a computer analysis of, of thunderstorms and weather systems. And uh, Ben was involved in this uh, high-frequency auroral antenna research project, which was somewhat infamous. Uh, it's a heart project on the north slope of Alaska. And I'll uh, describe that a little later. But here's the, uh, the concept that uh, Ben defined, that uh, we could have a, a pattern-forming beam that uh, is associated with a particular heater. And, and the idea was to create a plasma pattern in the upper, upper atmosphere. And again, Ben didn't, uh, we didn't get a chance to discuss uh, why these uh, cosmic particles uh, can reduce the energy requirements for producing the plasma pattern. But uh, the, his concept was to form a pattern, wait for the, the particle uh, to uh, trigger the, uh, the plasma and then uh, apply uh, more energy to create the, uh, the plasma pattern. There's a little background on uh, these ionospheric mirrors. And uh, again, I'm uh, very soft on understanding a lot of this uh, sort of thing. And so I <laughs> I'll kind of slide past this. Uh, but. Um, the bottom line was that they, they haven't uh, been produced because of the, the power requirements. And uh, his idea of uh, using the, the uh, initiation of cosmic uh, rays to uh, trigger the pattern may, may uh, indeed produce some results. So uh, kind of an overview of uh, the... Uh, weather modification concepts, certainly, uh, and my frustration in attending the meteorology conferences has been that uh, you mentioned weather modification, it's uh, always related to cloud, cloud seeding. But there are some other concepts, uh, using oil slicks to moderate uh, hurricanes, uh, atmospheric uh, heating to steer a hurricane, and uh, using uh, the uh, selective heating to uh, disrupt the convective shears that produce tornadoes. So our particular concept on the tornado prevention or disruption process is the concept called a thunderstorm solar power satellite. The solar power satellite uh, concept was developed by Peter Glazier back in the, the 60s. And the idea was to lay a, an array of solar cells out in geosynchronous orbit, 
convert that energy into microwave energy, beam it down to the surface of the earth, convert it back into electricity, and pump it into the, the commercial power grid. And uh, the thunderstorm solar power satellite then would be a small version of that, and the, the main output would be a concentrated microwave beam that uh, would go into, uh, well, we try to identify a key volume in a storm and direct intense energy into that uh, area. And by warming the, the cold rain in the downdrafts, that uh, we would disrupt the convective shear process in the uh, thunderstorm. And uh, one of the issues would be the, the beam absorption by the, the uh, raindrops we would hope would uh, absorb most of the microwave, intense microwave energy before you cook the, the people in the, the trailer park that you just saved from the tornado. So there's a, a pluses and minuses involved in, in the uh, particular aspect there. So we, we def definitely need uh, interactive uh, feedback on the absorption and effect of the, uh, the, the beam in order to direct it into a particular area. And here's a uh, overview that uh, the new scientists put together. You have the solar power satellite. Let's see, where's the uh, pointer? That, uh, Okay. Oh, 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 okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, so we got the, our solar power satellite, and uh, we need a computer simulation to tell us where in, uh, in orbit. We'd like to not go all the way out to geosynchronous orbit and maybe have uh, the satellite in a sun-synchronous orbit so that uh, we're over Tornado Alley at the appropriate time in the, the afternoon uh, to that the thunderstorms are likely to produce tornadoes. But the idea was to then... Uh, well, um, the idea was to generate a microwave beam at a particular frequency that uh, is tuned to the the cold rain da raindrop size, do some selective heating to affect the the downdraft, and that in turn would disrupt any uh, convective shears that uh, are creating the the um, tornadoes or concentrating the energy in the tornadoes. So tornado genesis is not well understood. Uh, we think that they form only in about 20% of the thunderstorms that uh, we need to identify and that uh, this is the, uh, whether people have uh, improved their, their identification of precursors, certainly the warning times have uh, increased. But uh, there are a lot of... Uh, complex uh, interactions here that need to be defined to put into the, the computer program to tell us where to, to end the thunderstorm to focus the uh, particular energy, what, how much energy we would need, and uh, where in, in the storm the, and the duration of the uh, energy uh, input. But it depends on the definition of the fine st structure of a supercell thunderstorm, and we've only looked at uh, supercell thunderstorms as uh, being a potential for interaction here.
But uh, we did uh, get the um, caps at the uh, University of Oklahoma to uh, put a selective heating into their um, their uh, computer program simulation of, of the, the thunderstorm and uh, determine what the microwave heating would be and uh, in the, this particular simulation, uh, we put uh, a tenth of the uh, standard uh, reference uh, solar power satellite, which uh, the reference satellite was at five gigawatts, so Ben had them put in half a gigawatt into the cold rain downdraft, and uh, it just totally wiped it out. And so we've uh, since then had to uh, point to that saying we can interact with the the thunderstorm, uh, but we need to refine that interaction. And um, at that stage, uh, the simulation didn't show tornado genesis. Since then, Ming Shui has been able to improve the uh, ARP simulation to show uh, the uh, formation of tornadoes. But uh, we haven't had access to that to uh, to interact to see what sort of uh, requirements would be needed to uh, prevent the tornadoes from forming in the thunderstorm. But it, certainly in the ARP simulation, we need a definition of the initial conditions, uh, need the atmospheric uh, temperature, pressure, and density, uh, and uh, we think that the plasma shield could uh, provide some of these uh, measurements. And very, more recently, we saw a, a thing where uh, GPS signal analysis uh, may uh, also provide uh, some information on the atmospheric parameters, but uh, we think we need uh, close to real-time input to the, the simulation to interact. If we're going to try to interact with the thunderstorm, we need to have uh, a, a good definition of that particular thunderstorm. So this is uh, a, an output that uh, Ming Shui had um, from his ARPS uh, computer simulation demonstrating the uh, tornado formation and, and I'm still not convinced that we really uh, have a, a grasp on on how the the tornadoes uh, form in the but the the issue here has been that uh, he runs his simulation on a supercomputer back in Pittsburgh and it's not even on site there at uh, at um, University of Oklahoma. So, uh, getting the, the computer simulation of the tornado formation process needs to, to be si uh, simplified. So, we've, we've looked at uh, some demonstration concepts and, and um, one of the, the things, the critical things, is the transmission of uh, microwave energy through the, uh, the atmosphere. And uh, we've looked at some ideas of using the uh, International Space Station as uh, a tool to, to define some of these early research uh, issues. So we would put a uh, rectenna on the uh, the uh, space station and have a uh, big antenna, phaser ray antenna on the surface of the Earth, and beam it up and and uh, collect the energy and determine the transmission uh, effects, and the losses, and that sort of thing. And then uh, we would hope to. Uh, put a uh, an antenna on the the space station, and uh, then 
do the opposite, uh, beam it down to a rectenna on the, the surface of the earth. But this is an early concept of a solar power satellite. And uh, the idea here was to uh, collect the uh, energy as uh, an array of solar cells, pump it into a phased array antenna, convert it into microwave en energy, and beam it down to the surface of the Earth, and then convert it back into electricity. So, now recently, uh, there was a workshop at Breckenridge on space-based solar power, specifically uh, for military uh, logistics, where the idea was to replace uh, hauling fossil fuels into the, the military in a particular tactical situation that we could then have provide the overview effect from a solar power satellite to uh, provide additional energy into the um, the system. And uh, they uh, they came out with some some specific goals in the workshop report. And that report, uh, if you look up space-based solar power. Uh, it uh, came out about last October. Anyway, uh, national energy independence, uh, to assist allies in their energy independence, provide economic benefits uh, for energy export, and provide environmental benefits from reduced carbon emissions, and uh, we think that it would provide a strategic goal for the evolutionary uh, route to a, a, a commercial solar power satellite system that uh, provides a major uh, amount of, of energy. So a summary of our initial indications, uh, simulations show that we can affect a thunderstorm. We need to refine those simulations and our understanding of tornado genesis. We must avoid adverse effects and uh, provide them with enough understanding to preclude the legal action. And this plasma heating uh, layer may provide us an interactive resource tool that demonstrates a lot of aspects. And the space-based solar power studies uh, will support the technical feasibility of the, the uh, solar power satellite system. So space-based solar power is the objective of this, uh, this Collect solar energy in space for use on Earth. Convert that energy into a microwave beam for transmission to Earth. And the thing that convinced me that this might work was JPL on their Goldstone antenna had set up a demonstration back in the 70s. And they uh, beamed microwave energy across a canyon, lit up a battery of, of football field lights, and they did it at, at an efficiency for that particular length of 83%. So energy into the antenna and uh, output to the the um, football field lights was 83%. Now that you sum up all the, the various energies, uh, the efficiencies and that, uh, there, there have been a lot of changes in, in that in solar cell efficiency and that and it was uh, studied intensely by NASA back in the um, the 90s. Uh, a fresh look at space-based solar power, and uh, when the Air Force decided to take a look at this, they uh, drew on a lot of the resources that had been developed there. So let's see. Okay. 
So uh, we think uh, that uh, there are uh, certain aspects of this, and, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a sponsor or, or tap into the right uh, uh, combination of things to get some some funding for this uh, research. But uh, certainly, space-based solar power has a, a potential to provide as clean, renewable energy from space. Yeah. That's certainly a, a something to, to be researched before we, uh, and it depends on the, the computer uh, analysis and, and us being able to, to determine the effects of how much energy and where in the, the system that we would put this, this particular energy. And, um, and it, it may, you, you're right, it may very well be that uh, it's not the, the right approach to prevent tornadoes from forming in the thunderstorms. Well, it, 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 it again depends on the, the frequency and uh, the interaction that you want to, the particular uh, raindrop size that, that you want to interact with in the, the thunderstorm. And that, again, is, is something that needs to be uh, analyzed. But typically, the, the uh, microwaves will uh, penetrate certain cloud cover. That's why laser is, is laser transfer from solar power satellites and that is not particularly practical because of, of the reflective uh, problem, but uh, certainly the microwave energy uh, can, at, at certain frequencies, penetrate. I'll just mention that you might want to be at the panel tomorrow night because most a large, most of the uh, proposals for modifying hurricanes have to do with altering the heating rate, the location and heating rate in the uh, in the cost structures of hurricanes. So that if it can be shown that the microwave energy can do that in, in a localized area, uh, I think you know that that's something else to think about. So we might we might want to add this to the uh, for the next. Well, certainly, uh, Dr. Ross Hoffman uh, had done a, a got funded uh, by the NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts to take a look at steering hurricanes, and I don't know whether uh, he has any input into. He, he isn't here, but he, we did. I think we did invite him, but uh, no, he, he wasn't. Yeah, we'll 
Well, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and and try to. Uh, I've I've got on on my microchip uh, the output of his his study, and and we'll go ahead and and provide that uh, aspect tomorrow night at the panel. And other question? One more, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, we, uh, that's the advantage of a phased array antenna is it's, uh, you can very quickly steer, steer it and, 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 uh, direct the, the beam, but you can also, if, if you're in trouble, you can, uh, diffuse it then and distribute the, the energy very, very quickly. Don't know. Again, it, it relates to, to Bill's comment about, uh, you know, the, the heating. We haven't, uh, been able to, even the Ming Shui, uh, and Kevin Brodemeyer, uh, we've been talking to them about, uh, interacting with the computer simulation, but, uh, they, they, uh, haven't given us an opening yet on that. Well, uh, the initial simulations were about a, a 50 meter diameter beam, and uh, forget the the intensity numbers that we were were looking at. But it was a very intense beam, and and uh, one of the concerns was absorbing that energy in the the cold rain before it uh, got to the, the surface of the Earth to to cause some issues there. Now, with the solar power satellite, you keep that beam uh, uh, energy distributed over a, a very large area, so it's it's like being uh, close to to a uh, microwave antenna that uh, you know that typically you you don't have uh, significant effects about that. But uh, so you want to keep that that beam intensity down. And that's another issue about using laser as, as the energy transfer uh, technique is that uh, you want to you not have to worry about uh, airplanes flying into it and, and that sort of thing, uh, that aspect of it. All yeah? right, let's move on to our next paper. Uh, so Kimio from Atmo Ocean Incorporated, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and its collaborator, Isaac Kennedy. 